All right, I'm back home. I changed. I was gonna go to Starbucks, but this is like a lot in here. And, and you know, things like this go bad pretty fast. And then this is brand new. And then this is some cold brew. There's like so little left, but I'm gonna mix whatever's left with this regular iced coffee. And then add some of this caramel macchiato creamer. So I was just at a, I was just at a, these fast food places. Should have asked them for a cup of um, ice. Because my ice machine is not working. The only good thing about my ice machine not working is that I have a lot of things in the freezer. So I was able to take out the little tray for the ice to make room for everything else. So that's really the only good thing. So I did stop and get some pancakes from McDonald's. Then I also got a hash brown. So I would have gone to Starbucks. I'll tell you it was a little bit. So if I would have gone to Starbucks, it would have been like an extra 20 minutes added to the commute. And then at Starbucks, you always take the risk, like, are they going to make my drink good? Sometimes they don't make it right, you know? Like for the, um, what's the drink that I like? The um, brown sugar oat milk espresso. I like it, but they've only made it like how they're supposed to make it a handful of times. And it's usually, it depends on where you go. Like some places they know how to make it. And other places it's just not good. It looks like a latte. So for that, just call it a latte, a brown sugar latte. I like when the espresso is on the bottom and then the milk. And then um, lately I've been liking the vanilla cold foam, the sweet cold foam on there. It adds like a whole extra dollar to your drink, but hey, if the coffees, if they make it good, then it's worth it. But $7 is still, I think, expensive. But that's just my opinion. It's like everything is going up in price. So to spend $7 on coffee really doesn't seem like the wise thing to do right now. Especially since I want to have a baby, I... I legit can't spend seven dollars on coffee every day this by itself was a little less than four uh five dollars so could you imagine i wonder how many cups this makes but honestly even buying this is a way so i can make my own coffee at home this is just the lazy way, and, and I'm fine with the lazy way. It's still cheaper than buying individual cups of coffee. So, four servings. So, four servings for, let's say, $5. I mean, less than a dollar a cup. Oh, no, a little more than a dollar, like one twenty-five for a cup of coffee. So... That's what we're doing today. We're making our own coffee. Because I figured I already spent, um, this was like $6 for this and for my hash brown. So, while I eat, I do want to tell you sort of like how I've been feeling. So I have been feeling tired, like even this morning, um, I woke up pretty early, like at 
like I was literally up at six, like my eyes were open and, and I was up, but I was tired. So I was on YouTube watching just shorts for a little bit. And then I fell back to sleep at 6.45. I set my alarm to wake up at 7.45. And I didn't wake up till like 8.15, 8.20 because I just felt just still tired. And don't get me wrong, this is good, but like that sweetness I look for in coffee is not really there. Which is fine, I mean, that's why I got the zero sugar added. I mean... Here's my Starbucks. So, I've been feeling tired. I've been, uh, oh, I've been getting a lot of breast tenderness. And I do feel like my breasts have changed. Um, I do feel like they have gotten bigger, if I'm being totally honest. Like, this is, um, a newer bra that I have actually bought. So I'm usually a 34 double D. So this one's a 36. So the band is a little bit bigger. Just because when it's like so tight, like I, my boob pops out, like, you know, you got boob on top. So with this one, it, it like covers, you know, a good amount. So I did have to go up in bra size and I'm not even pregnant yet. So. I could just imagine that my boobs are going to grow more, you know, as as milk starts to, um, as milk starts to, like, get in there, you know. So, yeah, like, last night I was laying down and, like, my boobs hurt a lot. And when I woke up, they were, like, hurting. But it's not, like, a, a really horrible pain. Like, you can't take it. Like, you know, they're just sore. Like, if you're on your period, but a little bit, like more intense and like even like i don't know just really sensitive up here you know um what else i think i'm gonna wind this up it's a little bit cold so this is my chick-fil-a these are my little chicken minis I mean, in retrospect, I might have been fine with just this and coffee. I mean, I'm pretty sure I didn't need to get the whole shebang with the pancakes. But... Oh, did I mention I've been hungry, like really hungry? My hunger has definitely elevate it higher so this is honey i haven't had these chicken minis since before covid and i can't remember did i put honey or did i put uh why do i feel like i put um jelly i think i maybe put jelly on this i don't really know i forgot when she asked me what sauce i wanted I was I drew a blank. Well, this is really good. So I'm gonna go warm this up.
So be prepared to wear a bunch of like loose fitting clothes because your jeans might not fit you by the time you're gonna do your egg retrieval. During my whole um, IVF process, I was wearing nothing but joggers. So that has not changed. Like, that's really all I wear. That or just stretchy clothes. What else? Oh, and I've been putting on patches on my stomach. So I got two here and two here. So the patches are to help your uterus lining grow. So my uterus lining is... At, it was at 11 the last time I went to the doctor, which was on Friday. Today's Tuesday. So it was at 11 centimeters or millimeters. I'm not sure. Probably millimeters. No, I'm thinking of inches. Anyway, it was 11. They're looking for it to be at least an 8. So I'm definitely there. Hmm. After my egg retrieval, I was on I was on estradiol, um, an oral tablet that's blue. But in the recent, like I want to say two weeks, I've been um, inserting that vaginally, and it kind of threw me off because the packet, the you know, like the label reads oral, but on my excuse me on my calendar it says vaginal. And I I didn't I didn't even have an application for that. I'm just like, okay, so how does this go in there? Like so um I had a, a different uh pill that I had to insert vaginally as well. And I know I'm eating, so this might be disgusting for some of y'all to be like, ew, you're talking about that while you're eating. But yeah, I mean this is this is real life like this is happening so why not talk about it that way you know like i want you to know that way you know what to expect during your during your process because i'm pretty sure a lot of this is pretty standard like what i'm going through is i'm sure the standard well, that's what the doctor said that first time they pretty much do do what they think is right for you based off your age and you know and then the second time usually how they treat you is based off of like how well the first time went or let's say it didn't go well they know to up the medication or whatnot but honestly both of my retrieval both my both of my ibf cycles were the exact same like the medication was the same the dosage was the same so so yeah and it becomes a routine Oh, but anyway, as far as the tablet that you do vaginally. So with that one, I didn't have an applicator, but come to find out, I Googled it and there is a legit applicator for that specific pill. But what I've been using um, is an applicator for a different medication. So I was thinking, what am I gonna do when I get to that medication? Like, I'm gonna obviously be short applicators because I've been using them for this other medication, but we'll cross that bridge when I get there. I thought you could also insert it like laying down with your hand. McDonald's pancakes? I don't know what I had against them, but these are really good. So I did get Chick-fil-A sauce. I'm gonna see how it tastes with the chicken minis. Just gonna do a little bit. I'm I'm not too. I don't really know. Just gonna do a little bit. But these are so cute. No wonder they call them chicken minis. There's so many. So the patches I showed you, I'm um I'm switching them out every two two days. So today actually I'm gonna remove them and put four more on my stomach. Good. 
I'm so mad Chick Fil A didn't have the mac and cheese. This is definitely a process. Hmm. And then on Sunday, <clears throat> so two days ago, my fiance went over to my family's house. And then that's when we told um, my family the gender of the baby. So it's kind of weird because the baby's not in me. Like, So to talk about it is a little different, you know? Oh, it's back there. Is that a... What is that? Oh, I was wondering what this was. I'm like, what's back there? So yeah, so we told them the gender that we chose. But again, it's just so surreal. Like, there's no baby in me yet. You know? But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful everything turns out the way we want it to turn out which is to have a healthy baby at the end of this process mm. so I am a little anxious and nervous I wonder how I'm going to feel after the the transfer I wonder if I'm going to feel like emotional, if I'm going to feel tired, if I'm going to feel more anxious or less anxious. Like, I don't know. <clears throat> so we'll see. I actually need to look at my calendar because I think I need to order more progesterone and oil. I only have enough um, for tomorrow. And then I would also encourage you to look at your calendar and see what's on there, like what medications you have to take at what time. Oh, there's a pill I'm taking as well. Twice a day, one in the morning, one at night. So, honestly, this is why I'm bringing up the fact... <clears throat> excuse me. This is why I'm bringing up the fact that you have to check your calendar because sometimes they may put something and it's not the right time. Like, I'm taking the pill orally in the morning and then at night. But they messed up my calendar and they put that I'm supposed to take... So it says one tablet orally AM and then there's like another um, there's like another bracket saying take take one of these pills in the morning. Excuse me. So if it doesn't make sense, ask. Call them or the cool thing about the portal that the fertility company or hospital has is you could write back and forth to the nurses, ask them questions. So I asked, I'm like, okay, why? You know, like this is saying I need to take this pill, two of them in the morning now, like that doesn't make sense. And they're like, oh no, continue to take one during the day and one at night, you know? But again, like it doesn't show that on the portal, like it shows something different. So you need to look at your calendar, ask questions. That way you know what you're doing. And that way you don't you don't mess up. Because if I were to take two of the pills in the morning, like I don't know what effect that would have. You know, what if it messes everything up? Like, I don't know. And another thing is like your cervical mucus is gonna change or your discharge is gonna change. So I, I usually don't, I don't get a menstrual cycle at all on my own. So the things that I'm going through, like I haven't gone through, but 
I'm pretty sure if you get a regular cycle or somewhat of a regular cycle, you might already know that like the mu the mucus the uh, the mucus the discharge changes and when you're more fertile it's a different consistency. Like trust me, I you know when I was trying to figure out like how to overcome infertility. Um, one of the things was like logging your uh, your discharge like oh if your discharge is this then you're closer to ovulation or if it's like this then you're fertile if it's like this you're not fertile if it's watery you know like it's just so much right but I never experienced that uh, discharge that was like sticky but on this medication I, I see it you know and I'm putting two and two together I'm like oh this is what the apps or the uh, web pages we're talking about to look for this kind of discharge and you know so discharge does change the consistency of it changes <clears throat> uh what else hmm I don't know, just your, your hunger changes, your mood swings change, or your mood changes and you get mood swings, or at least I do. Again, this is just like all me. I I personally don't know anyone who has gone through IVF, and if I do, they've never told me, so I don't know. Hmm. This is probably their chicken nuggets. They just put it in the bread. Because their chicken nuggets are bomb. So this looks like a chicken nugget. So I'm excited. I'm excited to be pregnant and to be a mom. I just never like imagined how this day would look. I never imagined like, I don't know, just this just feels so surreal to finally like have answers, to finally like do something that's actually working, you know, like. I'm telling you, nothing worked. The letrozole didn't work. Acupuncture didn't work. And it was expensive. If you're going to get acupuncture at least once a week, you're spending at least $100 a week on acupuncture. So if you go four times in a month, that's $400. Like... After so many months, I wasn't able to afford it. Like, that's expensive. Plus buying herbs, that's also expensive as well. And I would buy the herbs because I wanted to like get the most out of it. If I'm doing acupuncture, I might as well do herbs. You know, do the teas. Uh, one of them was a, like a little droplet that I had to put under my tongue. What else? I found the fertility, um, a website. What's it called? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, it's not like it worked for me. So it's not like I'm going to be like, hey, you should try it. Like, no, like it didn't work for me. So I'm not going to sit here and promote something that I personally didn't benefit from. But um, there was this website. I bought, I bought like a, a a cleaning kit. 
because I had just got off of birth control and I had decided like, okay, like I'm done with birth control. Like this is just a band-aid. Like I want to get pregnant. You know, I'm almost 30. Was this last year or the year before? I think it had to be like two years ago. I don't think I was 30 yet. But I'm just like, I just, you know, I, I can't continue to just have a birth control pill and just be like, you know, that's it. Like, I'm going to be 40 on birth control and, and I have a kid and 50 and, you know, like, I don't want to get to that where I'm just like too old to be able to have any um, good embryos or, you know, like, as you get older, this process that I'm going through gets harder, you know. So I just told myself, like, just get off of birth control. You know, I've seen people get pregnant after they're done with birth control. Um, so I did this cleanse that um, it said pretty much if you're getting off of birth control, it's supposed to like clean your body out of all the toxins and, you know, everything that birth control does to your body. So it's supposed to like clean it out. But that didn't help. I didn't get a period. I didn't get pregnant. Nothing. Hmm. I lost weight. I went on the keto diet. And I lost at least like 20 pounds. Still no period. I got down to 130. And I didn't get a period. Um, I didn't ovulate nothing. I um, would track my or try to track my ovulation with uh, the ovulation sticks. But no luck. It never showed that I ovulated on those. And then when I told my doctor, she said, well, since you have PCOS, then, you know, these kinds of tests really are not accurate. So that was a little discouraging because I'm like, well, I spent, spent money on those. Those tests are not cheap. <clears throat> you know, and I get it. I if you feel like those things help you by all means you know but for a doctor to tell me yeah that really doesn't work you have pcos you know like well thanks for telling me i mean i wish i would have met you a long time ago so you could tell me Those tests might work better on women who do get a menstrual cycle, even if they don't get it regularly. Um, it might work. But for someone like me with amenorrhea who doesn't get a period, like, it's useless. Like, my body never gets to the stage of where my eggs are, my egg is ready to fall out and shed the lining. That's why I have a bunch of little I think they said like a string of pearls. And it's all pretty much my little eggs that never matured. And I did ask like, I think it's a laparoscopy that I, I've heard of that women have told me about where the doctor goes in and they clean out your uterus, like all the um, cysts and everything, like they remove them. But my doctor said that's not something that I would benefit from or that I would need. If I'm not mistaken, she did say that's more like for endometriosis to remove like the fibroids and all of that, which I don't have, thank God. And if you have it, I'm not shading you at all. Like I'm just glad that I don't have to worry about that because I already have PCOS. That's already something to worry about and to focus on, you know, like I would hate to have another thing added to like this whole infertility process. Not even gonna front. I hope that after I have my our baby, 
I hope that after that I'm able to conceive on my own. Honestly. Like, I hope that that, going through that would, like, fix my hormones. I don't know. I have, I have hope, you know, honestly. Because this whole thing of injecting hormones, like, this is so overwhelming. Like, you know, and, and I'm not a Debbie Downer. I'm not going to, I don't want to be negative, but I, I do want to be real, right? We're women. We're girls. Like, it, this is between us girls. Like, what I went through was a whole lot, you know, and... For me to think like, okay, if I want another baby or two more babies or three more babies, you know, whatever it is that I, that we're going to want. Like, I don't know if I could continue to go through this. Like, this is a lot. Like, <clears throat> like I said, with the way, <clears throat> with the oral medication, the vaginal medication, the injections, like, this is a lot and maybe this is how you're supposed to feel at the end because you did go through a lot maybe it's normal to feel excuse me maybe it's normal to feel the way i'm feeling but i just feel like exhausted in a way like i don't say i want it to be over but i just want to like i said just be pregnant already and and just be at that stage but i know pregnancy is like a whole other thing and it has its own stages you know but i don't know i was gonna say but that'll be better but not really i mean you never know how your pregnancy will go you don't know like i've heard of uh your baby like being on your rib cage and hurting your rib cage and i know sometimes you have to pee a lot and you know you really can't sleep at night and the way you sleep is going to be messed up because the baby you you can only sleep so I know pregnancy, it's a whole other thing in its own. <clears throat> but I'm talking more about this IVF process. Like, this was a lot. So what I'm telling myself is that next time it won't be this bad because... I already did two cycles of IVF. My embryos are already frozen. So when I am ready for baby number two, it's not gonna be all this. It's gonna be, it's gonna be what I've been going through for these last two weeks. Has it been two weeks? I don't even know how long it's been anymore. Like two, three weeks? I don't know. I think this is my third week, honestly. Because before the intramuscular injections with the uh, progesterone and oil, I was doing the uh, the Lupron, the Luprolide. So I was doing that. And honestly, that seems like nothing now. Even like my IVF injections seem like nothing. And my intramuscular injection, I must admit, like that doesn't even hurt, honestly. I'm just more intimidated because the needle's long. But honestly, it, it really doesn't hurt if I'm being a hunter. It doesn't. Here, Mel. So if I'm being honest, yeah. Good girl. But I'm sure when I have the baby everything will i'll feel like okay it was worth it i have my baby i don't know if you would call my baby a rainbow baby because we've had like so many years of infertility i don't know if my baby will be a rainbow baby but i kind of think that they will be So, just a lot in my head, a lot going on. Nervous, hopeful, I want every, like every mom, right? Like, you want everything to turn out well. You want, you want to feel like, okay, this all paid off, right? So, thank you for eating with me and um, listening to, you know, what I've been going through. I hope it helps you. I hope that 
you know, this helps you kind of know what to expect in a way or what to look forward to or, or to know what's coming, you know. Um, like I said, I know there's other channels that talk about these things, but we're all different, right? Like what I go through might not be what the last person went through, you know, they might not. They might not have put on weight, right? They might still be as skinny as a twig, like, you know? Or they might not get <clears throat> cravings like I get. They might not be as hungry, you know? Like, I, I don't know. But this is just my experience. Like I said, hopefully it's helpful. I am excited for the transfer. Um... So, yeah, so Thursday is my big day. I still don't know what time, but um, yeah, hopefully it's early, honestly, just so that it could be done. Because if it's in the middle of the day or at the end of the day, like, I feel that my anxiety will just, you know, my anxiety will just um, be all in my head. <clears throat> but um, yeah, if you like the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.